What I want you to know is that this is a conversation between me and you. The camera's not here, just me and you. Um, if you ever stumble over your words or anything, that's okay. You can always say it again. We can edit it post-production. So there's not really too much pressure for you to uh, nail it the first try, so. Fantastic. We'll just go over uh, the basic questions to start off. Um, do you mind giving me your rank and your name? And then do you mind spelling your name for me? Fantastic. So I'm Lieutenant Lyons. Uh, I am in the Royal Wessex Seminary and the Dorset Squadron. My name is spelt T-H-O-M-A-S-L-Y-O-N-S. Thomas Lyons? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, what is your job title? Um, your, we call it the military occupation specialty. I don't know what you guys call it, but just what position you hold, what training you got, um, and your job title. So I'm a troop leader. I am in charge of four tanks and a tank commander myself, in charge of admin administration of those troops, and also executing tactical maneuvers on the battlefield. Very cool. Cool. All right, do you mind saying all of the above really quick? Name, <laughs> rank, uh, well, yeah, rank, name, unit, and then your job title. Absolutely. I'm Lieutenant Lyons. I am in the Royal Wessex Yeomanry at A Squadron, which is the Dorset Yeomanry. I'm a troop leader, which means I'm in charge of four tanks. I'm a tank commander myself, and I'm in charge of administrating the, the soldiers in the field and in, at, in barracks. Perfect. All right, do you mind telling me where you're from, just in the UK? So I'm from Surrey, which is a county similar to a state just outside of London. Uh, I grew up there, but I've now moved to Southampton, which is in the south of England and on the coast. Awesome. Um, why did you join the army? I joined uh, the, re the Army Reserve because I was, had always had an interest in serving my country, but mainly because I've always had a passion for tanks and this was a clear fire way of getting to them and enjoying the experience while still being able to have a civilian career. Absolutely. Um, is there a particular reason why you continue to serve or is it just from that passion? I think that passion absolutely drives my willingness to serve and there's opportunities such as this to come to other countries, you get to see the world, you get to experience different cultures, different people, and all whilst serving our country and putting our best foot forward and putting our, the United Kingdom in a great light. Absolutely, absolutely. So out here you guys are doing a training observation. Um, what, what is this for? So this is part of uh, the Army Exchange, Army Reserve Exchange program. So uh, we get to come out to foreign countries. It can be anyone in the NATO sphere, so like the United States or Germany or France. Attach into them for a two-week period. It can be as a part of a one-person attachment or up to 12 people, and get to see how they use their equipment, get to experience their tactics, their communications, and understand how they operate as an army. It ultimately develops interoperability, uh, coordination, and better cohesion on the battlefield as when we fight as a, an alliance. Absolutely. Um, so do you mind walking me through some of the various exercises that are going on out here during these two weeks that you've been here? Absolutely. So the main part of this two-week exercise we've been out here for is understanding how the Montana National Guard goes in through a gunnery phase on their M1 Abrams tanks. Understanding it from the British perspective of what they have to do to get qualified and seeing what are the differences between our two systems. Understanding that event, ultimately being able to interrupt operable, sorry, being better interoperable with our fellow Americans. Absolutely. I'll probably try to hurry us up here because they might be trying to shoot again, but um, what has been the most fun part about this experience? Oh, the best part has definitely been coming down to the ranges here um, at Limestone Quarry, seeing the tanks firing, both Bradley and M1 Abrams, and really experiencing the true power of the US Army. I know uh, we spoke about the jet lag on the previous interview, but has there been anything that's been particularly challenging so far about this? Anything that has added to the experience, but maybe been a challenge you had to overcome? I think definitely the altitude. Clearly it lends itself to some stunning scenery, but going on a run or trying to go to the gym has definitely been a bit difficult for people like me and Will, uh, sorry, Lieutenant Dobell, who live at sea level. It's quite a change to come up a few thousand feet and then try and do some exercise as well. Very different. I understand that, yeah. <laughs> um, I did hear um, that you guys might be planning on coming back for some future trainings and then I also heard about the um, training for sending the 163 to the UK to do some trainings with you guys. Do you know anything about any of that that you can share? Absolutely. So there's hope to send some, some people back next year, potentially to fire on the Abrams after learning what we've discovered this year and get some even better operability. 
Cool. We still got a couple minutes if you want to get that sound back. Perfect. Do you just mind starting from the beginning? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, there's the hope that we can send some more cr people out next year to better experience what the M1 Abrams is about and get some more detailed technical understanding of it. Um, and this coming August, the 163rd are coming out to us in the UK. We're going to take them into London and show them all the, the pomp and ceremony of the British Army, but also get them to experience our system, the Challenger 2 main battle tank. That's awesome. Yeah. That should be super sweet. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up today? Uh, but the National Guard is an absolutely fantastic thing. I cannot absolutely emphasize enough how brilliant they have been at hosting us so welcoming so absolutely technically fantastic in explaining things to us and the state of montana is absolutely gorgeous awesome i think that concludes the interview did you want to add anything else uh did you already hear what he, what's he going to take back like to the unit yeah do you mind adding a little bit about just what you're what you're thinking that this experience is going to bring you what, what you're going to bring back to the uk with you from this absolutely so there are definitely some key learning points to take away from our time with the montana national guard um, Certainly how training is done is different to ours and it can be used to better ourselves and understand how we can improve ourselves in our training regimes. Um, understanding that our interoperability with fellow allies, understanding what tanks they use, what equipment they use, has been really useful. So when actually going into higher levels of planning such as brigade and divisional, understanding how it all fits together and what other people are capable of. Perfect. All right, I think that concludes the interview. So it's a great job. Awesome. Thank you so much. Those are probably the two. All right. Cool. So let's get started. So can you uh, say your rank and then your first and last name and spell your first and last name for me, please? Sure. Uh, I'm Lieutenant William Dobell. I'm from A Squadron, the Royal Wessex Yeomanry in the United Kingdom. Awesome. And then spell out your names. Uh, William, W-I-L-L-I-A-M, Dobell, D-O-B-E-L-L. -L. Awesome. Cool. And is it... Is Lieutenant spelled the same way? It's spelled the same, but in the UK we pronounce it Lieutenant. Roger. Awesome. And uh, what is your unit? So I'm uh, part of A Squadron, the Royal Wessex Yeomanry, which is uh, very similar to the 1163rd. We're a uh, armoured regiment and we're the UK's only uh, armoured regiment, uh, reserve armoured regiment. Awesome. And then what is your, so we call it an MOS, it's like your military job and your title or position. Sure. So. Uh, that would be the Royal Armoured Corps, and then within that we're heavy armour, so we are main battle tanks, uh, and I'm a troop leader, so I'm a tank commander, and I also command a troop of tanks. Awesome. Is that four for you guys as well? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then, so all in one go, rank, name, unit, and position, job title. Sure. Just spell it all out. Including the spelling of the name? Uh, no. You That's just that. for you to write it down, hey? Yes, exactly. Yeah, cool. Just, just make sure we don't want to misspell Yeah, yeah, no, sure. Yeah. Cool. So whenever you're ready. I am uh, Lieutenant William Dobell. I'm from A Squadron, the Royal Wessex Yeomanry in the United Kingdom. The Royal Wessex Yeomanry is a reserve uh, heavy armor tank regiment. Uh, we're the only tank regiment that's uh, reserved, so very similar uh, in nature to the 1163rd. Uh, within that, I'm a troop leader, so I'm a tank commander and then a, a troop leader as well. Awesome, sweet. So uh, tell me about where you're from. So you said London. Yep. Yeah. So I'm uh, originally from London. Uh, I grew up on a farm just outside, uh, which is pretty good. And then I now work in the city, so I have uh, my civilian job is uh, yeah, working in the city of London. And I commute down to the southwest for the Wessex, the Wessex Yeomanry. What's your civilian job? I'm a project manager. Okay. Nice. Um, so why did you join the army? <laughs> Crikey. I know. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> um, I've always wanted to join the army. Uh, it's been something that I've uh, aspired to do for a very long time. Um, I looked at uh, regular army, full time, uh, a range of different things. I originally wanted to be a helicopter pilot. Uh, and then, where I was at university, there was C Squadron, the Royal Wessex Yeomanry, and I joined uh, C Squadron initially for a, uh, a short period of time while I was studying, and then realized I enjoyed it so much. Started training on tanks, driving tanks in my spare time. I thought, this is pretty cool. I'm going to stay doing this. Awesome. Are you glad you stayed with it over aviation? Very much so, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so walk me through some of, or I guess uh, go back and explain 
the exchange program and yeah. why you're here and stuff. Yeah, sure. So we're, we're here as part of the MREP program. That's the Military Reserve Exchange program uh, between our two nations. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're a tank regiment in the UK and we're visiting the 1163rd on their tank ranges here. Uh, there's a whole range of benefits for doing this, so it's uh, really good to collaborate with uh, our allies, uh, see how different uh, nations solve the same problems in different ways with different equipment. So we've been uh, getting to grips with uh, how the Abrams is operated, the, some of the similarities uh, between the Challenger 2 that we operate in the UK. Uh, very similar size vehicle, uh, also has a four-man crew different gun, so we're understanding the differences that uh, you have there, both in terms of the actual weapon system and then the training that we have to do uh, to be safe on each of the two vehicles, and then uh, fostering communication and uh, collaboration between our, our, our two countries. We've got uh, some of the National Guard coming out later in the summer to visit us uh, on a reciprocal visit, so we're really looking forward to hosting you guys uh, when you come over and showing you the UK, everything we've got, Challenger 2. All that good stuff. Awesome. Just double checking settings. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so, kind of walk me through like what gunnery was and uh, how you guys fit into it and what you took away from it. So, gunnery on the Abrams is very different to on the Challenger 2. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, even though it's a four man crew, uh, we have three piece ammunition, which means that the projectile, the charge, and the initiating charge are all separate. Whereas on the Abrams, it's all a single piece of ammunition. Uh, it's particularly interesting because the Challenger 3, uh, our future upgraded uh, version of Challenger 2, is moving to a very similar system. And so for us, it's almost a sort of sneak peek of what's to come. Uh, at the moment, we operate the three-piece ammunition with a rifled barrel. Uh, your barrel here and our future barrel will be smoothbore. And that means that we can, um, you know, perhaps share ammunition, etc. It uh, works. Works, works much better. Interesting. Would you say they're both better than the Leclerc or...? Uh... That's a very good question. Um, <laughs> I think I've got a pretty clear winner in my mind, but I perhaps won't say that while I'm here. That's fair. <laughs> um, so what was the most fun of training with Charlie Company? We've had a really great time while we've been here. We've been here for two weeks now. Um, you guys have been fantastic hosts. Uh, all sorts of... Uh, you know, visits around the state of Montana, which is obviously beautiful just as it is. We're here on the range at Limestone. We've got no ranges like this. I mean, a mountain range, um, fantastic views. There's a lake down in the valley below. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, being on the range, seeing Abrams and Bradley firing this morning, also, you know, pretty amazing as well. Awesome. Uh, what was some challenging events when during this training? I'd probably skip that question okay. because <laughs> We're, we're not actually training necessarily on the Abrams, we're visiting and working at how you guys train on it. So we're just observing. So hasn't really been a, the, the flight, the long flight and the jet lag. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> Specifically, uh, looking forward to Monday morning back at work in the office oh. when it's gonna be uh, midnight here or something like that. You didn't put in for a day off when you came back? Uh, I wish I did. I mean, I know you guys get like eight weeks of vacation a year. Yeah, I, I, I don't get that much. <laughs> I, uh, I'm in the wrong job, perhaps. <laughs> um, what are you going, are you going to take anything away from this training back to your unit, especially as a leader of a troop? Yeah, massively. It was, it's been really interesting. Um, I mean, I mentioned earlier some of the, the ways that we train are very different. There's also lots of similarities. A lot of tactics are the same. Uh, being part of NATO, we train to a similar, a similar doctrine. When you start getting down to the individual crew levels, though, uh, that's where you really start to see the differences between the platforms. Mm -hmm. And we've taken loads, uh, loads, of, loads away, and hopefully, um, yeah, can start bringing the back, that back to the UK as well. Awesome. And then you're excited as well for our guys to come and train with you? Very much so. Yeah, we've got a, a good program of events uh, for you guys who are coming later in the summer. And looking forward to hosting you, yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add, sir? Um, anything you want to hit on that I haven't asked about. No, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. All right. If that's okay with you. It's good with me, sir. Excellent. Cool. Awesome. Great job.